स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया We're going to talk about a very interesting family of groups called dihedral groups. Okay, these groups are the symmetry groups of regular polygons. I'm going to think of it somewhat graph theoretically though. So I'm going to think of the nth dihedral group as the symmetry group of the n cycle. So let me define for you the n nth cycle graph. So this is a graph gamma n uh, vertex set is uh, just a set uh, of integers from 1 to n and the edges are uh, 1 comma 2 is an edge 2 comma 3 is an edge and so on n minus 1 comma n is an edge and then n comma 1 is an edge. Okay, so it's got n vertices and n edges and uh, let me just draw an example for you. Gamma 6 is going to have 6 vertices and 6 edges joining them. Right? So I'll call these vertices 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now what's the order of the group uh, dn? So I'm defining dn to be the automorphism group of the graph gamma n. So this is called the nth dihedral group. Or, well, okay, so what's the order of dn? So the order of dn, uh, we've seen already how to compute this. We did the example for d4, in fact, when we looked at the automorphism group of the square. So the order of dn is the number of elements in dn that fix the point 1. So this is w in dn such that w of 1 is 1 and uh, so times the orbit of dn so dn dot of 1 in dn okay so we're using this result from one of the earlier lectures and so we ask okay what are the elements of dn which take 1 to 1 so if you have to take this point 1 and map it to itself what can you do with 2 Either you take 2 to itself because it has to go to a point that's adjacent to 1. You can either take 2 to itself or you can sort of take 2 to 6. And so you'll get a reflection about this axis. Okay, so uh, this group dn stabilizer of 1 in dn has two elements. First is just the identity element and the second is this reflection. So it takes... 1 to 1, it takes 2 to n, it takes 3 to n minus 1, and so on, and it takes n to 2. It interchanges 2 and n. It interchanges 2 and n, it interchanges 3 and n minus 1, and so on. Okay, so that's the element, I'll just call this element S. Okay, so this is the 1 comma s. And what is the orbit of 1? Well, you can take this graph and move 1 to 2, then 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and so on, and 6 to 1. So that's a rotation by 60 degrees in the case of the hexagon. In general, uh, you can rotate in the hexagon, you can rotate by multiples of 60 degrees. Um, well, so here what I want to say is that dn consists of one let me introduce a special element in this group we'll introduce the element r 
which is given by 1 goes to 2 oops I'll write it in one line notation 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 3 and so on n minus 1 goes to n and n goes to 1 so r of course uh, takes uh, 1 to 2 r squared takes 1 to 3 and so on and uh, some power of r will take 1 to any of the numbers 1 to n so so the orbit of 1 is uh, is all the full all the all the vertices of the graph so if you uh, apply this equality what you get is 2 this is this order of the stabilizer of 1 that has two elements and then you multiply by n. Okay, so the nth dihedral group has two n elements. Okay, I'm going to try to uh, write down these uh, two n elements. So I'm going to make a table here. So firstly, I have this element uh, identity. Every group has an identity element. So this is just the identity permutation. Then I have r, I have r squared, and so on. I have r to the power n minus 2, and I have r to the power n minus 1. And then r to the power n is equal to the identity. Okay, so these uh, elements are what are called rotations. And uh, I also have um, this element S, right? So this takes the identity to the identity, but it is in fact a reflection. Okay, uh, but there are some more elements. You know that a group is closed under composition. So I can ask, okay, what if I first apply S? and then apply R. So I'm looking at the element RS. So let's see what RS does. So it takes, um, where does it take 1? RS takes 1, 2, uh, well, so let's see. S takes 1 to 1, so this takes it to R of 1, so it's 2, okay? And uh, this is not a rotation. It's a composition of first you first you reflect and then you rotate. So it turns out that this is again a reflection. We'll figure out exactly what kind of reflection later in the exercises. Okay, and you can also do r squared times s. And where does this take one? Well, it take again s of one is one, so this goes to r squared of one, which is three. So on r n minus 2 times s and r n minus 1 times s. So um, all these elements here, what is the image of 1? So both these elements take 1 to 1. These elements take 1 to 2. These elements take 1 to 3. This guy takes 1 to n minus 1, and this guy takes 1 to n. Okay, so we've written down, um, you know, we, we know that this column has uh, rotations, this column has reflections, and the image of 1 is different uh, for elements in different rows and columns. So these two n elements that we've written down here are clearly distinct elements of dn. So uh, and we know that dn has exactly two n elements. So what we've done is we've enumerated all the elements of dn. Now, um, but we can also try to work the other way. What about s times r? Okay, so s times r is first you rotate and then you reflect. It turns out that this is also a rotation about some other axis. And so if it, it's going to be one of these reflections here. Which one is it? To figure out which one it is, we just need to see what it does to 1. So, what is SR of 1? Well, that's S of 2. 
and that's um, what's s of 2 s of 2 is um, well s fixes takes 1 to 1 and takes 2 to n so that's n so this must be s times r okay and let's look at s r of 2 uh, sorry s not r of 2 what I want to look at is s r squared of 1 okay so this is s of 3 but that's n minus 1 so this is um, s r squared and as you can guess this will go the other way this will be s r to the n minus 2 this will be s r to the n minus 1 and this will be s r to the n but r to the n is identity this is just s okay so these elements uh, can be written in two different ways in terms of r and s if you like uh, depending on whether you want to apply r first or you want to apply s first okay so what we have here is a relation in the group which is r to the power n minus i s is s r to the power i or if you put i equals 1 then you're just saying that s r is equal to r uh, to the n minus 1 times s okay so uh, what we are seeing is that, uh, okay, so, okay, so let R be the set of all elements of the form, maybe I'll call it Rn, 1, identity, not 1, let's call it identity, sometimes I write 1 for identity, so identity R, R squared, R to the n minus 1, and then R to the n is back to the identity, and then S is the subgroup identity and this element uh, little s. Remember, little s is the element which takes 1 to 1, 2 to n, 3 to n minus 1, and n to 2. So both Rn and S are subgroups. of dn okay and moreover this identity that s r to the i is equal to r to the n minus i times s this can be written as s r to the i s inverse is equal to r to the n minus i note that uh, s is a reflection s squared is the identity so s is equal to s inverse we can also write this as s r to the i s is equal to r to the n minus i so uh, whichever way you look at it what you get is s times r n is r n times s so this subgroup r n has uh, order n uh, it's a, d n has order 2 n and uh, t n is um, Rn disjoint union with Srn. This Srn is just a left coset of Rn, but it's also a right coset of Rn. So Rn is a normal subgroup of Dn. Okay, when we say something is a normal subgroup, then we would write it like this: a triangle. A uh, pointing towards the smaller group. So Rn is a normal subgroup of Tn. Okay, so here let's just make a few observations about what we've discussed. We have this group Dn has two subgroups. Rn 
and S. Okay, and then R n is normal in D n. And thirdly, every element of D n can be uniquely written. in the form g equals u times s where u belongs to r and s belongs to maybe i shouldn't use s because s is a specific element um s epsilon where epsilon belongs to um s Okay, this last property, well, it's illustrated here in this table, right? So, um, these are the elements where epsilon is equal to 1, these in the first column, the rotations, and the reflections are the elements where epsilon is equal to s. So, but every element has a unique expression where of into has a unique factorization, two factors where the left factor is in Rn and the right factor is in s. And we can also write it the other way. Um, that it can be written as epsilon times u. So under these circumstances, we say that um, dn is a semi-direct product of Rn and S. We write dn is equal to Rn. Now Rn is a normal subgroup, so that symbol is just slightly changed. Yes. This um, Rn is just isomorphic to Z mod Nz, and this S is isomorphic to the cyclic group of order 2, which you can call Z mod 2Z. And uh, so, so this basically this group, uh, dihedral group dn, can be constructed from two very simple groups: the cyclic group of order n and the cyclic group of order two. Uh, this is a general construction called the semi-direct product construction. So what we have seen here is an internal semi-direct product. We have a group, we have two subgroups, and we have said when this group is a semi-direct product of these two subgroups. But we can also think of this as a construction of new groups from old. Okay, we look at this in the next recording. I'll stop here for now.